Hi everybody, this is my little instruction about auras and hopefully you enjoy it and um, I'll try to cover as much as I can. I don't have notes, I'm not reading from a script and it's 8.15 in the morning, eh, but we'll be alright. So, um, first I'm going to tell you this is for entertainment purposes only. All disclosure, blah, 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 blah. Now, there's a ton of information out there on auras, how to see auras, what they relate to, how they work, all this other kind of stuff. Um, I'm giving you the conglomeration of everything that I have learned about auras. Uh, there's a lot of people out there that would probably disagree with what I say. And that's perfectly fine because there's no right or wrong way. And if anybody's ever telling you this is it, this is the only way, uh, that there's only one path to do it, uh, turn around and walk out the frickin' door. Because there's always multiple ways to do anything that has to do with spirit. And it's finding the way that works for you, honestly, even with auras. So first I'll give you my little definition of auras. Okay, most people think that auras are their soul colors. And they're not. Okay. You have to think you gotta separate that part. We're in a body now, okay? So not that the aura doesn't have to do with the soul energy. It definitely does. But it the colors in an aura are not soul colors that you are in spirit. Okay? Two separate things. So, my definition of an aura, the best one that I have put together, is that the aura is the energetic expression of the homeostasis of the four bodies. Mind, body, spirit, emotional. Four bodies. We, we always think mind, body, spirit. Everything's fours, four seasons, four cycles, four, okay? Four bodies. So it is the emotional, energetic expression of the homeostasis of the four bodies. And they correlate to the chakras, okay? An aura is always changing. It does not stay one color your entire life. Nope. Because the aura is the reflection of what's going on with us as well as how we are, how we're moving through our life. It is, it is a reflection, it is an outside expression, energetic expression of our homeostasis. Um, so it's constantly changing, constantly changing. Yeah, you can have the same color for months at a time, even a couple of years, or a couple of the same colors are recurrent, but that doesn't mean that it's set in stone, okay? So toss that right out the door. Now, I'm going to get some real basic stuff, and then we'll get into a little bit of meat, and we'll get into how to start to learn to see them, okay? Anything that I show you guys, um, I will also be uh, sharing. So first, we're going to look at basically whoop, a model of the energetic fields. Okay? So the aura is in layers. The closer to the body, the more it has to do with the body. And the more that you go out, the more you're getting into the spiritual fields. Some people say, such as um, this program here, which is from Healing Touch, that there's four. There's that four again. Hmm. Other people will say that it's multi, multi layered. Me personally, I feel like it's a combination of both. It is highly multi layered as much as it is four layers. Because, as we know, energy blends. And depending on what's going on with us, it can end up um, getting bigger, 
expanding it out. Like when, um, when you feel something um, coming in attacking towards you or like you're needing protection, most of us think that we should be pulling our energy fields in closer to us to protect. And actually, you want to do the opposite. You want to expand your aura put, because that pushes everything out, okay? So you've got um, closest to the body is your etheric field. Then you have an emotional field. You have a mental field. And you have a spiritual field, okay? And, um, you know, when you walk up to somebody and feels like you just got slimed when you're standing next to him or you shake somebody's hand and meet somebody for the first time and you're just like I need to step back 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 further back from this person you're feeling their aura we invite people into our aura field you know everybody talks about their personal space that is the aura is your personal space all different terms okay uh, let me see what else this one has to offer okay this is a good picture because it shows you um, the chakra fields with the aura field so as we get a little deeper this is gonna make even more sense okay Ooh. all right notice your chakras are all spinning but see that aura field out there. Woohoo! Yeah. So, how well are your chakras in balance? That affects your aura. Your aura will also reflect any imbalances within the chakra fields or those that are in a, that are the most prominent that are coming out. Mine tends to show green a lot because I do a lot of healing. So my aura tends to reflect a lot of green. If I'm doing um, medium readings, my aura tends to get a little more into the blue fields, but I still hold a lot of green. Um, let's see, we got another one. Looking to for my other picture. So here's a good picture of two people meeting so you can see the connectivity and how important energy is throughout our entire lives. So not just the aura, the chakras, you name it, it all impacts. So if you look at this, you can see how two people meeting, notice how the energy joins in the center. That's how we are picking up some of those intuitive information off of people that we meet constantly or that we're talking to people we love even you can notice that um, let's say your husband or wife had a really bad day at work okay and you don't know about it they just got home from work they haven't told you okay from the time they pull up in the driveway you're feeling this mm, something's up they walk in the door they haven't even said hello to you yet you haven't even really looked at them but you're feeling it it's like okay did you have a bad day at work honey oh my goodness it was the worst day that is emanating through the auric field sadie don't 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 tear up my tissue paper i still need that for class and don't eat my book either. I need that for class too. My kitty cat's trying to help. Okay, so. Things to do. One, for yourself, as far as your own personal aura, there's many things we can do to help our auras to stay in balance, which is working with our four bodies Okay. You're wanting to have the physical in balance as much as you can, okay? Nothing's ever going to be perfect. It's never going to be 100% perfect all the time. Okay? 
because we are living emotional beings so we're always needing a little work on our energetic fields okay um, and helping our the more that we work within it also comes out and is reflected through our aura okay you ever notice that some people you stand next to you just can't you never want to step away from them they feel so good god you know I I, I had lunch with Sally the other day and god you know I left there just feeling so wow energized boosted up really really happy well that's because Sally's energy is coming into our auric field while we were having lunch we were sharing energy we were sharing our auric field hers boosted into mine so where I might have been feeling a little meh her being in homeostasis in a balance and, and being in a high vibrational energy emotional base at that time because she was extremely happy she just had good news she just got a promotion at work whatever it was that had her flying high fed into my auric field okay something else about auras every item whether it's a book my cup of coffee my animals living breathing um, dormant inanimate will have an auric feel to it okay why why would an in inanimate object have an aura to it because I've touched it I sat and I read the book okay by me holding the book I've now brought it within my energy okay so whatever I bring into my energy I am sharing my energy with and there will be tendrils of energy still on the in inanimate object okay same thing with houses okay every time some a family lives in a home we feed the structure okay this all came from living materials of some sort whether it's rock water wood okay so it not only has the energy of the materials it's got the energy of the builders the carpenters the electricians the plumbers everybody that touched the house everybody that built the structure put energy in to the building everybody that touched the structure did an energy exchange and left tendrils of their auric energy their auric field in the inanimate object whether it be a building a book a piece of clothing all those things pick up energy because we are in contact with it so we leave imprints okay so where was I going with that <laughs> that's the bitch when you're not scripted uh, so that's also why it's very important about sending uh, saging and cleansing your home frequently if you're going to if you've had something for a long time and you're gonna give it to somebody else you need to cleanse your energy off of it because you're giving them a piece of you whether when you were reading that book if you were having major drama in your life and you were very very upset all the time that's the energy attached to that book now okay because your auric energy filtered into the pages so everything within nature has an aura everything inanimate has an aura because of our interaction with it and it's all in how the 
the intent of what we do for ourselves that puts out the auric field. Okay. Now, another piece of information about the aura. Yes, it will reflect the balance of the chakra system. So, the shock, the solar plexus of the chakra system is a very, very key point. That's the seat of the soul. That's kind of like where we, that's our rooting spot in the center. Okay. So, if you're if you've got chakras that are really having difficulty, okay, you're not going to see those colors in, in in balance. And the more that you clear chakras and rebalance your chakras, it will reflect into your auric field because you're raising your vibration, you're clearing your energy, and um, that balance is going to end up reflecting all the way through the different various levels of the auric field and anybody that comes in contact with you is going to is going to feel it they're going to notice the difference colors there's a lot of information about the colors of auras most of the time most of us have multiple colors within our aura you know you might be yellows and greens, you might be greens and blues, you might be red and yellows, okay? And people will ask like, well, how in the hell do you define the color? What's the color mean? And the best tools I've found to use about what colors, you know, to color definitions to kind of pull it together is really using the chakra color definitions because the emotions are there the rootings are there the the emotional bonds to those chakras correlate as well so just because you're seeing red in someone's chakra does not mean that they're pissed off and they're angry okay it could instead mean that they are within the passion of a family relationship um, perhaps they're feeling very, very loving with their spouse. Um, my aura showed up bright, bright red the other day, and um, it had a lot to do about how I was feeling with my husband. We were just having a moment that, you know, for me that whole day, I just kept thinking about him and just felt such a deep rooted grounded um, peaceful love passionate love there in my heart for him and so it was reflecting out in my aura my aura was showing a lot of red because I was just I was so focused into that rooted bond of us together and it was reflecting out um, when I have a bad day everybody says my aura is like hail Okay, what else can I tell you before we get into a few techniques and how to see auras? Most people, most mediums, most psychics, most, and every empath, every empath of every form that I've ever run into, at least feels the aura. You don't always have to see it. You can feel it. Okay. Um, working on learning to see auras. Excuse me, I need a wet palette. Okay. There's a couple different techniques you can work with. All right. Um, if you have a group of friends, you could work with them. I really suggest starting with inanimate objects and then moving up into like nature with animals and trees and plants and then start working with people. But um, that's not the way I learned. 
So just because I usually recommend it to other people, that's not exactly how I learned. I did a class um, with a mentor who we had a whole group of people and that's what we were there for. So when, when you're wanting to work with it first and you're going to use an inanimate object, okay, you should get, get a pack of multicolored tissue paper tissue paper. Yep. Just like we use for gift wrapping. Okay. Now, I only had pink and yellow left over from a gift, so these ones aren't really what you would want to use because you're wanting to use contrast. So, like with a pink, you would want to do a blue. With a yellow, you might want to contrast green. Okay. So, <coughs> quit chewing on my book. Stop that. So, take a book and okay, you got one color. All right, now this one's a pink. If I had a blue, I would use a blue, but I don't. So, I'm just trying to give you guys a visual. Then you're going to take the other contrasting color. Notice, got both, both of them here. Okay. Yes, Daddy. So <laughs> you have them split. All right, your contrast colors, and put it. <laughs> I'm sorry, I have a cat attacking my stuff. So what you're gonna want to do is like some place that you have a white wall. You're either going to do this with white background or completely dark. All right. Um, fluorescent lighting works good. And um, you're distracting me. Stop. <laughs> so <laughs> you got a white background. Okay take a chair, whatever, put it against that wall. Take the book with the two pieces of tissue paper, sit it in the chair across from you. All right. Then close your eyes. Do some nice, slow, deep breathing. You're wanting to calm key, calm, center, ground. Okay. Uh, that's why you want to do some nice deep breathing with your eyes closed. And when you go to open your eyes, you do not want to focus. Okay. Don't look dead center at the book. All right. You want to look off, off center, outer edges, eyes out of focus. So like for me, I prefer to look above what I'm trying to read. Okay, so if I'm trying to read somebody's aura, I'm looking above the head on those outer edges. I don't want to focus in. You need to keep your eyes, you know when you sit and you you do a staring contest with somebody and everything starts to fuzz out and your eyes are out of focus? That's what you're going for. And so you're looking at that outer edge. Don't allow the eyes to focus on the object. If you struggle with that one, you can also use, um, instead of, while you're doing the deep breathing, <coughs> excuse me, you can blink rapidly, okay? Blink your eyes many, 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 many times. Many, 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 many times, okay? What you're doing is you're taking the eyes out of focus so that they can't, tune into anything yet. And then there again, you're going to look at the object, not directly at the object, around the outer edges. And don't get frustrated, okay? It takes time. If you see a color, write it down. If you see nothing but white, 
if you see nothing but a fuzzy edge you're getting something okay just with anything else spiritually it takes practice so it's not something that you can just go oh let me just turn this key and boom it's there All right you have to practice at it working with nature is one of the most awesome ways of expanding and working with reading auras um, because nature's just got some awesome beautiful energy going on and everything has an auric feel to it so you know when you go to the park for instance lay down in the grass for a few moments by a tree make sure the tree is kind of in front of you <laughs> close the eyes do a little deep breathing keep your eyes out of focus look around the outer edges of that tree all those leaves and branches and notice the energy that you feel um, you can also work with just walking up to it close your eyes stand within the auric field of the tree okay just like with a person it's no different so you're standing within the auric field of the tree close your eyes let everything else disappear in the world and allow yourself to open up to the auric field of the tree you're going to most likely be feeling a lot of grounding um, different trees have different energy some are a little more playful some are a little more stodgy I know when I go in and work on my my big oak tree in the backyard um, that one for me feels very ethereal I guess would be the best way to put it um, because it's a very old wise tree uh, oaks have a lot of wisdom in them um, and has really deep rooted one so for me that's the, like when I'm when I'm getting really flighty and everything I go stand in the oak trees aura touch the tree let the aura flow into mine so that I can get you know a little more grounded um, yeah this mm, blank blank spot sorry guys told you it's really early flowers birds plants animals you name it practice with them and you can you'll end up seeing the differences you know um, when you're working with people okay if you're reading people's um, auras some of the good places to go is grocery stores because of the fluorescent lighting fluorescent lighting really messes with our eyes as you know it's not good for us anyway but it really messes with the eye focus so you know you can stand in a department and kind of keep your eyes out of focus and look at different people's auras and you're as you practice you're gonna end up noticing the difference otherwise um, for me the best way to uh, work with seeing especially practicing in the beginning with seeing some uh, person's aura there again white background because you want no color to bleed in okay you don't want the eyes to end up pulling the color off the wall into the aura okay so you're either gonna go pitch darkness or blanch white okay as neutral white as you can get and so you have them sit in the chair across from you same thing as with the book ground breathe center keep the eyes out of focus and look 
don't look dead on in their eyes or dead on at the nose, okay? You're wanting to look off center or up here, or sometimes you might even want to focus here instead. It's up to you because like I said, there is no right or wrong way with anything that is spirit. Okay. How do you clean an aura? What about that? <laughs> There's a couple different things we can do. So just like, um, in fact, let me grab my little sage stick. sage do a sage cleansing okay I have a video on YouTube that talks all about um, cleansing shows you how to cleanse a person okay you sage to cleanse a home okay there's other herbs you can also use um, in place of sage if you're allergic to it like cedar cedar is another one you can cleanse with um, but like I say if um, sage is always the best. White sage is better. Um, this one was made for me from a uh, group of white witches, so it looks a little different than most smudging sticks. And you can tell I use it a lot. Uh, it used to be this long. <laughs> okay, so you can sage them. Another thing to do if you're feeling like you're. <laughs> Um, or that your aura is really off, or you want you just been having a lot of stress and upset. Okay, another thing you can do it's called unruffling. Okay, and you know how you pick you, bird like a chicken. Okay, because I got chickens all over the place with my neighbor. Um, feathers get all poofed up, and you want to smooth them down. Okay, same con uh, excuse me, concept. Okay, unruffling. When you're unruffling an aura, you're always going to start from the crown and work your way down. Okay, just like you're smoothing things out. The hands cupped. Okay, cupped. And you're scooping. Okay. You start closer to the body and you're scooping. You're pushing out, scooping off and out. Okay, so you're so what you're doing, think of it like you're brushing feathers, okay? And you go all the way down to the feet. All the way down to the feet and past, okay? And you even want to get up here. Whoop! up in here okay so remember that picture big aura so you're gonna get about this far out in your scooping start close okay, I'm close to my face and then I'm gonna go back go all the way down now one thing I like to do is when I get to the bottom of the feet then I usually will go blowing off any residual and I'm usually mentally saying send this back to the universe for recycle for me I do a mental um, when I'm doing healing or cleansing or anything like that mentally in my head I'm doing a lot of talking because I'm talking lifting off all negative energy anything that the body and soul spirit do not need any longer to be recycled back into the universal energy force to be returned to me in positive light okay. going out and out and out and you'll notice how clear you feel it's like whoo I kind of just got it got a shower not really a shower you just lifted off the muck okay um, doing it with sage here again you're going to use the sage smoke a little rose petal on my sage 
um, you're going to use the sage smoke. Okay, you're wanting to clear, so you're going to go clockwise through all the energy fields. Okay, all the chakras. You're clearing, you're cleansing, you're releasing energy all the way down to the body. Okay, right? over and over and over. Okay, those are the best two ways that I have found to help my aura stay clear. Um, getting out any excess muck that might be going on and uh, helping also to boost my energy when I'm really low like today. I've been awake since 3.30 so I'm a little off my game today. Alright, so that's those things. I also wanted to show you a picture one more picture of the chakra system in particular. This one I'm wanting to show you because it shows come on people where the hell is the damn page shows the stellar star and the earth star and most people don't discuss these at all um, in and I'm in their chakra work okay so if we come up closer you can see up here stellar star soul star and down at the bottom earth star see and it it's not that close to the feet it's a little further away um, but that's why I say when you're wanting to work on clearing the aura, if you're wanting to look at the aura, um, chakras, all of those things, it's not just the seven energy centers. You got all these other grids, and you've got grids and grids. We're a great big energy ball stuck in a physical form. <laughs> so. I hope that this helps you learn a little bit about auras and um, if there's more information please let me know that you would like to know about um, this is just doing basics and I hope you enjoy it so y'all have a great day love and light